أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وإن تؤمنوا وتتقوا يؤتكم أجوركم ولا يسألكم أموالكم إن يسألكموها فيحفكم تبخلوا ويخرج أضغانكم ها أنتم هؤلاء تدعون لتنفقوا في سبيل الله فمنكم من يبخل ومن يبخل فإنما يبخل عن نفسه والله الغني وأنتم الفقراء وإن تتولوا يستبدل قوما غيركم ثم لا يكونوا أمثالكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم ولله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عليما حكيما ليدخل المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها ويكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وكان ذلك عند الله فوزا عظيما ويعذب المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات الظانين بالله ظن السوء عليهم دائرة السوء وغضب الله عليهم ولعنهم وأعد لهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا Hi, my name is Samuel Shropshire. I'm an American citizen living in Saudi Arabia. I came here in November 2011, not knowing anything about Islam or the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Most of what I had heard was extremely negative. In America, our news channels boosted their own air ratings by regularly sensationalizing breaking news of terrorism. Every 30 minutes, one witnessed horrific scenes of bombings and bloodshed and murder, often one Muslim group fighting against another Muslim group. As killings and beheadings took place, there were always the shouts of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, God is great. I was invited here to Saudi Arabia by Safi Kaskas to work on what was known as the Q Project. Dr. Kaskas wanted to produce a new, easy to read American translation for the next generation of young Americans. Since I could not read or speak Arabic, I wasn't doing any translation work. I was simply invited here to check the English to make certain that this new interpretation of the Quran was easily understood. My work, of course, required that I read the Quran over and over again. Well, as you can imagine, having no knowledge of Islam, I had hundreds and hundreds of questions. I was shocked as I read to find that Jesus, peace be upon him, was often mentioned in the Quran. Jesus was presented as one of the greatest prophets. And even the story of the virgin birth was mentioned there. Many of the miracles that Jesus had done, I found them in the Quran. There were even a couple of Jesus' miracles mentioned in the Quran that were not mentioned in the Bible. 
Evenings were mostly spent alone in a bedroom that had been set up for me in Dr. Safi's office. At night, I would stand on the balcony of that building and I would look across a very busy boulevard to a mosque and I would hear the calls to prayer. I would see men and women coming to, coming to the mosque and leaving the mosque. Children were playing football in the mosque parking lot. Except for the minaret, it appeared to me to look like a typical Christian church in America. My heart longed to be in that mosque. I felt compelled by God to go there. A few months later, I got up the courage to walk down the street and to knock on the door of Taqwa Mosque. Now, nobody knocks on the door of a mosque. You, normally, they just open the door and they walk right in. But I was not sure what I would, how I'd be received, so I st was stood there knocking, knocking, knocking until someone came to the door. That person simply said, may I help you? <laughs> I said, my name is Samuel. I'm a Christian from the United States. Is it okay if I come inside? And that man, Shafiq Zubir, who was the caller to prayer, he reached out and he hugged me and he said, of course, come in. I sat in the back of the mosque during prayer times for three days. I didn't understand what was going on. I saw men standing, bowing, putting their heads to the floor as the Imam led them in prayer. I had little knowledge about what was happening, but I felt God's presence in that mosque. And the men of Taqwa Mosque were so friendly to me. After three days, I asked Shafiq if he could teach me the first surah of the Quran, Al-Fatiha. This was a necessary element in praying the, four, the five daily prayers. I was memorizing sounds, but I didn't know what the sounds meant. So I started comparing them with an English translation I had, and I realized that there was nothing in Al-Fatiha that was inconsistent with Christian teaching. There I read the encouraging words that God was the most merciful, the distributor of mercy and forgiveness. My heart was being strangely touched by the words of the Quran and the love displayed by the men of Taqwa Mosque. Dr. Sadiq Malki would later drive me to the Islamic Education Foundation in Alhamra, neighborhood of Jeddah, where I said, Al Shahada. According to Islam, we're all equal. There's none above another. There are scholars, but their role is educational. As for the relationship with God, it's personal, it's direct. The faith itself is simple and clear. It's summed up in just six points. There is one true God who is unlike any other being. He is neither born nor does he give birth. He has neither spouse nor offspring. Nothing is comparable to him. He's all powerful. He knows everything perfectly. He is the most merciful. Secondly, a belief in the angels who are indeed the servants of God. They obey God's bidding and they do whatever they're commanded to do. They don't have any free choice. Thirdly, there's a belief in divine revelations. Islam acknowledges that God revealed scriptures including the Torah, the Gospel, the Psalms. However, down through the ages, many of these divine revelations had become distorted and somewhat corrupt. The Quran, which also contains God's revelations, is intact from it hasn't changed from the very beginning. The Quran, which also contains God's revelations, is still intact in its original form. Fourthly, there's a belief that in all earlier prophets and God's messengers, not just Muhammad, they believe in Abraham and Isaac and Moses and Jesus and hundreds and hundreds of other prophets. They believe that the prophets were the best of mankind. Muslims believe in the last day. That's to say, this includes the belief in all that God and his messenger have told us about what happens after death, including recording of good and bad deeds, the resurrection and the gathering of all creatures, the reckoning that will take place on the great judgment day, the prophet's intercession, as well as heaven and hell. 
Man's ultimate aim will be to save himself from that day. Muslims believe in the divine destiny of predestination. Whatever God wills is certain to take place, and what he has not willed will never take place. This present life is a test for man, and man should endeavor to pass this test. These tenets of faith appeared to me entirely consistent with human nature. And then I asked, how can one become a Muslim? My search showed me that one needs to fulfill five specific duties, which are called the pillars of Islam. These are first, a declaration to believe and to say verbally, I witness that there is no other deity other than God and that Muhammad, along with all the other prophets, is God's messenger. Prayer is an important part of a Muslim's life. Muslims seek to maintain the five daily prayers. These are spread out over the day and night. Thirdly, there's the zakat. 2.5% of one's property is an obligatory charity provided that one owns more than a certain threshold and holds it for a year. Then there's fasting. Fasting is an important part of the Muslim's life. Muslims fast throughout the month of Ramadan. They do this every year, abstaining from all food, drink, and sex from dawn till sunset. One must also refrain from futile arguments and quarrels and forbidden things. The month provides a unique spiritual uplift for all Muslims. Then there is the pilgrimage or Hajj. This is performed in Mecca and its surrounding areas. It's a duty to fulfill this pilgrimage once during one's lifetime, provided that one is physically and financially capable of doing so. People often ask me, Sam, how did you become a Muslim? In the church was a library, and in that library were children's books. One of the books my mother got over and over again was called The God of Abraham. In that book were beautiful color photos of camels and deserts. She would read me the story of Abraham, how he was commanded by God to leave his mother and father because they were worshiping idols. She would pause and she would say, Sammy, you always have to pray to the God of Abraham. There is only one true God, the God of Abraham. My commitment to God has been strong and enduring since my younger years. And now I have found absolute peace in Islam, in a faith that I once thought was hostile. I found friendship and hope amongst a fraternity of other Muslim brothers and sisters. I have found a family of believers.